Yes, it's episode eight now, Deb. Can you believe it? I know we're old hands at this now. Not, not, we, not that we have old hands, of course. No, no, no. Actually, we haven't done hands. We'll have to do hands. But this episode is all about <laughs> things you can do at home. In fact, it was the most requested episode that we've ever had. Yes. So we're going to be talking about all things you can do at home. What did you do during lockdown when you couldn't get to your beauty parlour? Well, beauty, uh, not just beauty parlor, hair and everything. It was it was really quite bad. And I'm not really good at doing my own hair. That was terrible. So I had to I had to end up getting a hot brush, which is which I enjoyed doing in the end. But it's very, very hard for me because I've got such thick hair and I'm very lucky to have thick hair. So I was Yes, but I'm not going to knock it. But I did have problems with my eyebrows because as my eyebrows are tattooed, they still go grey. So the, the hard part was, and I usually have them tinted, so I had to go and, and find some tint. So I found some eyelid tint. I tinted my own eyebrows for the first time ever, and now I'm going to do it all the time. I've done the eyelashes. I've never done my eyebrows, though. Yeah, but it's the same sort of thing, so I did that. It was it was a real, real eye-opener. Yes, well, I was all right with my hair because I dyed my own hair, um, and I cut my own hair. I'm very self-sufficient, actually. I don't really go I only used to get my nails done because they're acrylics so I just let them grow off and it was quite nice to see that my nails were still all right and they still grow all right they're still very soft and that's why I have acrylics but um you know that everything was still working properly because it's years since I saw my own nails absolutely years well I had my nails done as well and then I had um I let mine grow out I had an SNS nails and they were really fabulous and I've now only just gone back to to having my my gels put on but I mean my own nails are really really long I mean you can see they yeah you know, they're, they're good really, nails yeah they, I, they do, really I do think that you have either got good nails or you've got bad nails I mean mine grow nicely but they're just so soft you can actually bend them they're so weak um, and I just think it's an Italian thing. My dad's were the same. I've got little short Italian stubby hands. So <laughs> it's a shame, isn't it? The little stubby person instead of the beautiful I'm a stubby woman. person. <laughs> I'm getting stubbier as I get older. <laughs> beautiful woman that we see before us is a little stubby person isn't it great that you see someone as gorgeous as Linda Lusardi who still has these problems with herself I think that's very I think it's lovely actually Linda that you that you are not sort of well up here you're just gorgeous can you say that you're allowed to say that <laughs> but I tell you what you I bet you you pick any of the beautiful women that you know in the world and they all are unhappy about something Within their I, think, I think the thing is, and I, I'm sure all of us have had this, you know, you when you were younger, I used to feel fat, I used to feel this, I used to feel that. You look back at pictures now and go, oh, my God, I look. I know. Amazing. If only I look like that now. I know. But yeah. anyway, I've been doing some home treatments. So have you, haven't you? And here is some of the treatments I've been doing at home. So this is a little treat I like to do for my lips. Now you take two spoonfuls of sugar and one teaspoon of honey and you mix it all together and this is a wonderful sort of exfoliation for your lips leaves your lips feeling soft and gets rid of all the dead skin and uh, especially in the winter my lips get a bit sort of dry around the edge from the cold and everything and it just gets rid of all that and you just pop some on your lips you can eat it if you like to be sloppy and just rub it in Oh, it feels really nice actually. Just for a couple of minutes. And then, mm, tastes lovely. <laughs> and then just wipe it off. But it does, it leaves them feeling soft and a bit plumper. You brought the, the blood to the surface. And your lips are ready for your lipstick. The tricks I have for making my hair look fuller and thicker is to tie it up at night and I use one of these soft hair bands. I double it up, pop all of my hair into it. Just like that. It's quite soft so it won't damage your hair and I pull it out a bit so it doesn't make one of those sore bits on your scalp where you pulled your hair too hard. Then just give it a, a whiz whiz hairspray and in the morning your hair will look bigger fuller and especially if you've washed it that evening when you go to bed when it's still very slightly damp then uh, you'll find that you've got much bigger hair in the morning well I know I keep on about that foot in a mask but honestly 
well, I had dry skin and hard skin on my feet all my life. And the first time I did it, it was like my feet falling off. <laughs> Obviously, I do it every three months now, so I don't get such dramatic results. But, you know, it's just keeping my feet soft and smooth. I think it's amazing. Yeah, and I love it too. I've been doing it. But what I found is actually between sort of doing it, my, I, I get a bit of uh, hard skin on my feet and it starts to peel off anyway. So they, they start making your feet peel naturally, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, no, I think they're really, really good. Um, you know, and I love doing things at home, especially if you get a day when no one's in and you can sort of pamper yourself. I love that too. I love that too. But I, I don't have a very nice bath in this house, so I'll have to get another bath. That, oh, that's yeah. the next thing on the agenda. Yeah. So how? what have you been doing? This is one that we did earlier to show you. Well, I've just had my hair done, as you can see, and it's lovely and soft and gorgeous. Uh, but it doesn't look like this first thing in the morning. So I want to show you what I do to make my hair look better. This is my hair. This is how it wakes up looking. And this is a few little hacks that I use to make it look better. So I first of all start off by just doing that, running my fingers through it. See, I'm very lucky because I've got so much hair. I don't brush it, I just run my fingers through it. So that has given it loads and loads of body and I keep doing this for quite a few minutes actually. And already you can see we've got a bit of a, a bounce going on. Then I use my magic serums and I put these <clears throat> in the ends. You see how full it's getting? Fuller and fuller. Then of course, I have a few magical products that I use in my hair. And this is the L'Oreal Magic Retouch. Now, even though my roots don't need doing, I often spray this here. Whoops, that's it, from here. And just when you've finished everything, this is my favorite product to put in. It's a uh, system professional and it's, it's a spray that energizes your hair as ridiculous as that might sound it's gorgeous and because you've got your fingers through it and it's a bit little bit yucky this is this just makes it absolutely fabulous but this is how I used to do my hair years and years ago so as long as you keep putting your th fingers through it giving yourself all of this body loads of product loads of body and another thing I haven't washed it for four days how about that and the other thing, do you remember we talked about it before, the, the towel that dries your hair? Did you ever use it? I have used it, yes. It's um, brilliant. Do you know it is it? good. It is good. It's difficult to get all of mine in sometimes. But no, and it, what, do you know what I love? I mean, Lucy got one too, so I got a pack of two. Um, that it just, if you're doing a face mask or you're doing your makeup or anything, just to get your hair out of the way, it's light and comfortable. And like, I just wrap my hair in it and I'll come and watch the telly for a little while. Um, whereas with a towel, it's always falling off, isn't it? And it's heavy and it hurts your neck and all the rest of it. So yeah, I think they're brilliant, those towels. And they're so um, cheap, about only three quid. So that, that's another yeah. one and that really helped my hair. So if you're like me and you'll have very, very uh, frizzy hair when it's wet, and that's uh, that's because of you know all the bleach <laughs> for all the years and all the gray and God knows what else is there. But you're actually putting that on actually when it comes out, it, it's, it's really nice curls as opposed to frizz. So it's yeah. a very, very, very nice product. So it's one of, it's a fiber, it's a fiber, a fiber towel. That's what they're called, aren't they? Fiber towel, yeah. With yeah. the little, little, you twist it and then there's a little button or hoop and then you put it on the button at the back and it's great. Yeah, so it's only, only three quid and I'd really, really recommend it. You can get it anywhere, any on Amazon, anywhere online. It's, it, they really are fantastic products. I love them. I want to tell you about this lady, right? During lockdown, Yes. Um, Lucy discovered this wonderful skincare expert. Her name's Abigail James. And she does everything from skincare to massage. And um, she does facial exercises and massage on your face. And honestly, Lucy and I tried it. We followed her YouTube tutorial. And afterwards, your face looks like you've had a facelift. It is amazing. I can't wait for you to meet her. I know Lucy's quite um, starstruck because she's, she watches her all the time. Um, so she's joining us now. It's so exciting. Well, welcome, Abigail. Um, we became aware of you during lockdown. Um, my daughter, Lucy, um, was doing the facial massaging that you do. And I was, I was flabbergasted how well it worked. 
what are, tell us what are the benefits of doing facial massage okay well there's loads of benefits and I'm kind of uh I'm an advocate of lots of things when it comes to rejuvenation and, and face massage is just one of those parts but if we kind of think on just that physical level we are stimulating blood flow you know I don't know whether you've tried some of my massage things at home but you can sometimes get just that erythema and pinkness come up on the skin that's fresh blood flow that's coming internally which is nicely feeding all of our skin cells it's almost like a skincare product that we're naturally producing inside to benefit the cells then we've got the easing off of the tension in the muscles whether that's neck decollete jaw muscles are strong you know, they're, in, they're intended to be strong. It's kind of what their job is. And we can hold so much tension in the face that we don't even realize that we're doing. Uh, so we're easing off that. We can be draining, lymphatic drainage. So getting rid of puffiness. So there's loads and loads of benefits. And what, I, what I'd like to know is, I mean, I'm getting a little bit jowly here. So what would you recommend that I did? Okay, so firstly, this is probably one of the most common areas I get. Can I just, can I just do that? Yeah. Um, what we need to be doing, as much as we're seeing here, we actually need to be working on all of this area. Okay. So, for example, we've got a, a, a muscle, we've got the sternocleomastoid, which is actually attached behind our ear, and it comes forwards and attaches down here. And then we've got a platysma, which is like a flat muscle that runs all the way. And then we've got loads of different kind of muscles on this lower part of the face. So as much as we're seeing it here, there's that benefit. We need to be easing off this first before we jump into to working on this area, okay? I suppose some simple moves for easing off this area. We can either use one hand, and if you make a knuckle, you can go up and down and make sure that you are coming from behind the ear. It's always good on this part of the face to actually have a, a bit of an oil or something that you can slip with, yeah? So whether it's one or if you're comfortable with it, you can do two up and down the neck. We miss this bit. We don't want to be going over the uh, middle section here, okay? And then with our knuckles, we can then push that underneath the jaw. And if you start in the middle, then you can glide out under the jaw. Okay. And then just stay like this the rest of the day. There you go. <laughs> That's what we need. And then we just need a big clip to hold everything back yes. behind us. Yeah. Um, and then that actually suppose, feels, really, feels really nice. It does. There's also that element of taking a moment for yourself to relax. Mm -hmm. uh, you, I'm guess you know, I'm guessing you've had body massage. We all know yeah. what that feels like. It, it, with there's the emotional element as well. Uh, what's a nice move on the, the jawline, which is an easy one, is a pinch. So if you kind of make that type, yeah. And if you push the thumb up and you can pinch along the jawline, you could then do both together. Mm. Okay. The thing with facial muscles, one of the questions I often get asked is, will my face drop am I going to be overstretching the answer is is no absolutely not we're not kind of putting the skin under any excess stress and because we want to be working on the muscles we can be really firm and how so often should you do this Abigail how often so you can do some sort of face massage daily there's even if it's with your morning cleanser take that excuse to to massage your face with uh, it might be, well, the evening. I, I personally find I seem to have more time in the morning. By the time it's bedtime, I just want to take my makeup off and go to bed. Um, yeah. you, you could, if you wanted to, you know, set aside, let's say, 15, 20 minutes once a week and do like quite a comprehensive face massage. But I really like adding it into your daily routine. 
And actually, it's a good way of waking your face up in the morning and probably helping the lymphatic drainage and everything, isn't it? Definitely. Well, I think we get to a certain age that when we wake up in the morning, our face needs a bit of rebuilding. <laughs> yeah, <you know>? absolutely. <laughs> um, so a, a massage is a brilliant way of doing that. It, like you said, you know, doing that lymphatic drainage uh, or if you've had a few too many drinks the night before, sometimes this area, the eyes can be quite puffy. So actually, if we were going to do some work for the eye area, it's down and out. That's the direction we need to be going. So out and down. Yeah. Whether it's fingers, whether it's knuckles like you're doing. And some drainage. It's also brilliant to get cold teaspoons onto your eyes as well. I haven't got any with me to show you, but the cold, again, it kind of constricts the blood vessels um, and brightens up the eye area. There's loads of reasons why the eyes can be puffy. Uh, alcohol, a food or something that we're actually allergic yeah. to, a little bit sensitive to. Um, yeah, yeah so, th so there's loads of, of reasons why our eyes can be puffy. Coffee is a big one. Now the colder months are coming, is there anything we should be doing for our skin to prepare for the cold winters in England? Yeah, so firstly, I think this time of year, I find clients that usually they've been abroad, got some sunshine, obviously none of us have done that this year, but pigmentation becomes more of an issue, or it's this time of year that we can treat that kind of thing, and maybe your home care, you might want to step up, to some active ingredients that are focusing and targeting on more pigment issues. So this is just that time of year for, for that. So, you know, it might be a brightening serum, something with extra vitamin C, kojic acid, those kind of things. But I find this transitional season, I find it's quite an individual thing. Some people go, oh my goodness, my skin just gets really dry. Whereas other people say, Do you know, I just start breaking out. So it, it, it's quite an individual thing and it's, it's being comfortable in tweaking your home care routine. That's the important thing. But the key is don't stop using your SPF. Oh yeah, of course, because yeah. even winter sun can damage it, can't it? Yeah, the UV rays that are doing the damage are the UVA rays. They're doing the aging and they're not the ones that give us the tan. They're the ones that are around all year without us realizing the UVB are the ones that do the burning. They both kind of damage, but actually the UVA, they're there 24 seven. Abigail, can you tell me about the decolletage? What can we do about that? I've, I've got great, mine's all wrinkly and horrible. I mean, is there a massage or is there something that you recommend to do with it? Yeah, we can definitely massage decollete. The thing with the decollete is because of its angle, we kind of, we often get the sun rays directly onto this. And often before the age of 40, we kind of forget this bit. We haven't got the adipose, the fat tissue underneath, like, like we have it in our, in our face and on the rest of our body. So sun damage is a key thing, but also that it kind of, we can get a bit bony across there as well. Massage wise, I would be applying oil. It's best to do this kind of thing you know either in your bra with your straps down so that you can actually go all the way across um getting a specific neck product in is great yeah. there's loads of treatments that are just wow um one of my gadgets here that sat behind me uh haifu and fractional radio frequency they're amazing for lifting tightening Reduce, not just here but actually on on the whole you know the whole kind of face and on the body uh so the yes there's the hands-on massage we can do but if we've got some some kind of more issues there's loads that we can do in the treatment room that can actually benefit that as well 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 you are amazing i mean all the, the different things are what is your favorite treatment what do you like doing the best that's that's a really good question actually my clients are so varied and I will always do a bespoke treatment so I suppose that is my favorite treatment to do however a bespoke treatment for you we might go right we want to focus and I'm not picking up on this you already said you want yeah. the, the, yeah. the lift 
So we might for you go, right, let's do some radio frequency, let's do some massage, maybe let's do a low level peel, you know, and we jigsaw the treatment together. Whereas a bespoke treatment for someone suffering with acne, it's a totally different thing, you know, and they, they need a lot more handholding through their treatment process. Uh, but both I love doing because every skin is so individual and unique. And can, can the massaging actually help acne by bringing the blood to the surface and stuff? That's a, that's a good question, actually. So the lifting massages I wouldn't be doing on an acne skin. Where you've got active acne, we don't want to be... To be honest, sometimes it can be painful, active acne. Um, yeah. And we don't want to be spreading that bacteria around. So that is where a lymphatic massage is much more effective and better for, for that type of skin. Whereas if we haven't got any spots, you can be deep and get the blood flow going and you know really get involved with that lift and tone. And you've got like loads of tutorials on YouTube, haven't you? So people can tune in and have a look at exactly how what to do and I how wait. to I'm going to try mm -hmm. more of this. That I love that move. That's a great move. Yeah, that's <laughs> a new one. That's a new <laughs> it's a Debbie one. It's a Debbie. Lift this up move. I I've also have a new book. I've got my second book coming out, um, which is based on face massage. It's a four week program. It's not going to be available until early next year, but it's going to be called the Glow Plan. Um, but it's specifically around face massage and teaching specific techniques. In a mouth massage, that's a, a brilliant technique for softening these lines. So, the oh, same wow. Yeah. And Ken, do you think that this massaging has a permanent effect on the face? It's a little bit like going to the gym. We know if we go once, you know it's not really it's not going to do anything to be honest so with these types of things it needs to have that regular practice or right. you, you have that one treatment or you do it once on yourself and you see that immediately glow and, and radiance but to maintain it it's got to be that regular practice right and Brilliant. finally do you have five products that you couldn't live without yeah i do i bought some with me they're oh, all brilliant. okay. They're all professional ranges. Okay, uh, I've spent years playing with products, and I've kind of got now a little bit geeky about the, the professional ones that are doing something. So, a range called Derma Vigils. Okay, it's you can only get it in clinics. They're cream cleanser. It suits every skin type. I've never come across a skin type it doesn't suit. And they're all about supporting the barrier function. So even though it looks like a cream, it smells like a cream, it feels like a cream, it's, it's not really cream. quite different. <laughs> okay. The best vitamin C serum, because from an anti-aging point of view, we all need a vitamin C serum. Yeah. IS Clinical Super Serum. It really packs a punch. So in the morning I cleanse, put your powerful vitamin C serum on and then kind of your moisturizers and other things. But IS Clinical as a range, wow, if you want results, you I think you, I've actually got some of that. Have you? Have yes. You could take it a little I'm, bit down onto the neck as well, but just a little bit. It's you feel it on the skin. It's a punchy vitamin C. It's really yeah. Accurate. Yeah. So that's that one. Um another serum which is pretty cool uh neogenesis they're oh fairly new over here this one is called recovery and i find from an anti-aging point of view from a, a rosacea problem skin point of view it's it's pretty special so that is one of the again it's one of those wow products spf is an essential so ultra sun they have, this one is a tinted, you might kind of see, I'm still, oh. but it kind of ticks that box of doing the sun protection, but also giving you that little bit of colour. That's that, nice in the winter, isn't it? When you yeah. go completely pasty. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't bobble on the skin either. Some SPFs, they just feel a bit cloggy. That one, that one doesn't. I think Ultra Sun, as, as SPFs go, they're a brilliant range that focus on that. And then another 
moisturizer from a range called Epionce. This, it's rich, it's luxurious, it, you feel like it's filling in the cracks and crevices, you know? <laughs> um, so that is, especially kind of this side of 40, we need extra hydration, whether you're perimenopausal or menopausal or whatever, yeah. we need that extra hydration going into the skin. So that has become a bit of a, a bit of a godsend. Well, that's our Christmas list sorted, isn't it? There you go. You'll only need a few hundred pounds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just for my face and my decolletage. Well, I'm going to be, do I'm doing this already now, actually. Yeah, it's good that. I like this. Is Debbie, this is Debbie's movement. Yeah. This is I a, like that. I'm going to have to do a video and go, yeah, uh, there's a new move. It's Debbie's move. Debbie's yeah. move. Yeah, yeah. Debbie, Debbie Arnold's uh, jowls. Or not. There we go. <laughs> oh, well, I thank you so much, Abigail. That's been so much fun. Will you join us again sometime? Because it's there's loads more questions, and we yeah, just... we'd love to speak to you again. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when it comes to skin and aging, there's there's so much. Yeah, there's so much. Whether it's holistic or techy or whatever. So now I'm, I'm, I yeah, I love kind of talking about what I do. I'm a bit geeky about it, so so it's all good. Thank Fantastic. You. Thanks for joining us today. Bye. Pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Well, I'm definitely going to be doing all of those, aren't you? Oh, especially the winter tips with the skin and everything. Oh, she's amazing. I can't yeah. believe it. And doesn't she look well? Her skin's really, really tight. I don't know how old she is. Didn't like to ask, but she looks amazing too, doesn't she? <laughs> well, we don't she? talk about age, do we, Linda? No, age is just a number. It Trouble is, is the number's <laughs> changing every year, and I've just had another one happen. Oh, but you're but the thing is that you know people used to say this. I remember when I was younger, you know, older people were always saying, "Oh, I still feel the same inside." And I used to think, "Oh, no, you don't." Yes, you do. <laughs> you do. You do. The brain do. is still the same. Well, hopefully. Well, almost. I don't think COVID <laughs> did my brain much good, but um, I'm still here, so that's all that matters. But uh, somebody else who's still here is our lovely Dee, and oh, I yes. think she's gonna she's gonna be telling us some home treatments as well. Hi, and welcome back to Planet D. Well, I hope you don't mind. I've actually, um, I brought you into my kitchen today because this is where the DIY ingredients for the face mask are. I'm sure you've all got some. For instance, yogurt, avocado, honey. That's all you need. Maybe some olive oil. So that's what I've done with this particular face mask, which is so fabulous and so cooling. Oh, it was such a relief this morning because I have got sensitive skin. But even if you don't, it's just the most beautiful feel of this DIY face mask. Avocado is fabulous and it's just a quarter of avocado you need. That's all. So it doesn't work out that expensive either. Um, what the avocado does, it softens and moisturizes your skin, which is fab fabulous. The honey is really great because it's actually antibacterial um, and it just feels so lovely it just it, it really feed you can feel it feeding your skin with the yogurt and the yogurt coming straight from the fridge is just beautiful because when you put it on oh it's got, got the most amazing feeling it's just like healing and beautiful and organic and, and everything so come on guys there's loads of other recipes actually online these are mine which are fabulous, but just look, do it yourself, DIY. A little tip from Planet D. See you again soon, bye. I hate to say it, but I think she's slightly mad. Well, I mean, you know, it takes one to know one is all I can say. That's true, but I do <laughs> love her to bits, but she's kind of a little bit loopy, I think. Yes, I'm loopy. We're all loopy, all with crystals and strange things. But anyway, yes, yeah. our next episode, our next episode is really quite exciting. Oh, We're yeah. going to be talking to Tracy Giles about permanent makeup. I'm really fascinated Ooh. about permanent makeup, and I'm going to be having something done. Are you? What are you getting done? Are you going to surprise us? I'm going to tell you. All right.
It's secret, but you will soon know what it is. But I, I'm, I'm fascinated. I have been fascinated by permanent makeup for ages because it used to look really weird. People used to look really odd with it, but it's, it's now become a fantastic art and it's just brilliant. Because I have seen some older ladies that, you know, your pigment goes out of your skin and your hair a little bit, but they've still got these black slugs on their face, which I think looks dreadful. So yes, you'll have to convince me a little bit. Yeah, I don't worry. I will convince you. You used to have slugs on your eyebrows anyway, didn't you? As I did. I had you were big younger. Italian thick eyebrows that met, met in the middle and they were like really big. I used to have spent hours plucking them out and then eventually they just gave up. All the hairs I plucked out didn't ever come back. <laughs> anyway, you have become so beautiful when she has all these things. Oh, my big slug eyebrows, my little fat hands. I mean, really? I mean, really? Please, I want to tell you what we see. What you see is one thing, but we see somehow this beautiful woman. I don't know where she's come from. Well, one day, I think both of us should do a, just a flash of what we look like when we wake up in the morning. <laughs> Speak for yourself. You'll just have a pair of eyebrows in bed soon. <laughs> but anyway, don't forget don't to know, like and subscribe. Do show. I don't know what? why we do this show. I don't know why we do this show. Like and subscribe if you want to see more insults, obviously. Yes, and we're at the dot beauty angels, and we've got a website coming soon too. Oh yes, exciting, exciting. So we will see you in a couple of weeks with the wonderful Tracy Giles, and um, yes lots of other tips and hints and everything to make us more and more beautiful well me i don't know about linda lusardi with her slug eyebrows <laughs> see you soon bye, bye.